Mad Worlds, The Seven, The Pit. This place was built long before I was born. The exact amount of time is unknown to any of us, however the overall decay of this place makes it feel ancient. The air here is thick with the dust of rust, every metal surface seems to have felt its kiss. Twisting quarters wind through this complex, leading to desolate rooms filled with people, most of them still alive. There are no rules or laws, no protections. To most, it would seem like hell, but to me, it's the only home I've ever known. Like so many others, I was born here, and the only way out is to die. We don't know why we are here. We don't know who is in control. The only life we see is each other's. Though we do not know the actual name of this place, as a collective, the people here decided to give it our own name, The Pit. I do not have a name here. We are designated by numbers that we are given as new residents at birth. My number is 7465. I am a male, thin, but not frail. I don't see as well as others, but there is nothing I can do here to fix it. While you do learn very early that no one is ever truly your friend in the pit, I am mildly close to number 7470. 7470 is a female with dark hair. She is shorter than most people here, making her easy prey. I would act as her muscle sometimes, in exchange for her acting as my eyes. Humans are social creatures, so most people here will hurt you, but not actually kill you. However, there are no rules or punishments for such actions, nor are they discouraged. My mother was number 6841. I don't know who my father was. In the pit, there is no such thing as romance or respect. While murder is off the table for most, not much else is. Women, like my mother, are left to carry, birth, and then care for any children on their own. Most stop after the birthing part. Those babies are left to starve or be preyed upon within the hallways and rooms of this complex. Those who do decide to care for their children will assign them an, the next available number in line. This, however, does not guarantee a life for those children. Should something happen to the mother, the child is left to fend for itself. If the child is too young to fend for itself, then its fate is no better than those who were given up at birth. My mother survived 132 feeding cycles after I was born. I was lucky that by at that point, I was old enough to still scrape by in here and survive. It was that time again. Our last feeding cycle was started 30 meals ago, and we all knew what that meant. It would admit it was time for a new cycle to begin. All of the twisting quarters within this place eventually did wrap around to a large central room with a ceiling so high that none of us could actually see it. In the middle of this room sat a closed metal box with a seam running down the middle of it. Around it is where we would soon all gather as a group in a large circle. I brushed the rust off of my back as I left the room I had chosen as my sleep quarters. The floors were as caked with the dust of rust as every other surface here. Others were already making their way down the hall towards the central room. To me, they were nothing more than faceless blurs, both literally and figuratively speaking. I waited a moment for some of the others to walk further down the quarter and away from me. As I was distracted watching them, waiting for them to gain the distance from me that is it I desired, I felt a small tug on my wrist. Looking over to my side, I noticed the short blur that I had over time come to recognize as 7470. She was eager to get to the central room and eat. I guess she felt as if she needed some extra protection while there. Under the circumstances, I would need her eyes to help best navigate the crowd. So like usual, I agreed. We made our way through the winding hallways made of oxidized steel until we reached the central room with the others. We were right on time. The cycle hadn't started yet. While there were no written rules on attending the start of cycles, it was an unwritten rule that you didn't miss it. Those who did normally found themselves on the receiving end of an unfortunate event. 
There were still a few stragglers filling in behind us, and the tension of hunger was filling the room like a thick fog. Soon it would begin. We would be able to eat our fill for the next 30 feedings before another cycle would be required. Around me, the others began to look up and stare into the darkness above. I did this as well, even though in reality 7470 was the one acting as my eyes. It does one good not to stand out or show weakness here. Soon, the horrible wait would be over, and we would be able to go on living our hell. A low vibration running through the floor below us was the first indication that the start of the new cycle had begun. From above us, the sound of clanking chains and running machinery could be heard. There were light murmurs amongst the crowd, accompanied by distant whimpers as the noises above us grew louder in intensity. The vibration in the floor below us grew into a steady rumble as the cycle continued along its course. Though I wasn't able to see well, I was able to make out the faintest silhouette of it up there in the dark. It was swaying back and forth as it neared us. The claw was approaching, the claw that would bring us our feedings. We watched it, eager for our hunger to be satiated. It stopped for a moment, just within my scope of vision. There, it began to move back and forth as if on a track, swaying this way and that slightly as it did. It moved left and then right, and then moved forward a small bit before deciding to move backwards. I didn't care for the games that liked to play with us. I was just hungry and had a need to ease that desire to feed. I closed my eyes, waiting for the end of the cycle to complete. I really didn't care to see the rest of the cycle ceremony. I just wanted to fulfill my needs and then fuck off like everyone else. There was a sudden, ear-piercing scream. It did not originate far away from me like I had expected. Instead, it came from a man standing right next to me. I don't know his number. Everything happened too fast for me to notice a thing like that. I felt a sudden force hit me on my side opposite of the man before I crashed into him. I lost my balance, causing me to knock us both to the ground. Before my scattered brain mind could even begin to comprehend what was happening, I began to hear it. The screaming. The horrible, horrible screaming. As I pulled myself to my feet, the thing that I now suddenly feared most was right before me, displayed for even my eyes to see. Gripped within the pronged fingers of the metal claw was 7470. I realized then that the claw had made its choice. It had been me. The sudden force that knocked me to the ground had been her choosing to take my place. I don't know if it was a split-second decision, or if it was something more, but now the decision was made. I had no choice but to live with it for the rest of my life, however long that may be. The claw began to lift back into the air, carrying her with it. Her screams of fear and protest began to be drowned out by the cheers of excitement. The surrounding group only cared about the food the cycle would be bringing us. Others in the crowd around me were letting out laughs and sighs of relief while they watched the cycle's events play out. Grateful, it had not been them who had been chosen. The metal box in the middle of our group began to rumble. The seam running down the middle of it split open as the rusted folds of metal began to pull away from each other. As the seams fully opened and lowered into the ground, the horror that I knew would be there made its appearance. Two cylindrical steel pillars lay horizontally next to each other. Each was coated with rusted and pitted spikes. Below them was a grated floor. The grate hung over what appeared to be an infinite pit of darkness. Both pillars began to spin inwards towards each other. First, they spun slowly, but quickly gained speed. 7470 was in hysterics as she watched this. A hot stream of urine trickled its way down her leg before splashing into the contraption below. This was met with more cheers from the surrounding crowd. I wanted to do something, anything, but I knew there was nothing that could be done. Even if I had tried, the thought of not being fed would cause the others to stop me. The claw began to lower now bringing her closer and closer to the machine below. She tried to lift her legs up. She wanted so bad to avoid the inevitable, but we both knew she could only buy herself so much time. The claw continued to lower her towards the contraption. Her howls of terror were almost inaudible amongst the ever-growing cheers. Finally, she could avoid it no longer. The machine got hold of her right foot. Purchase the book to read more.